Welcome to Symposium X. Today I, I have gathered a wonderful panel of speakers. They are truly amazing. So I'd like to ask them to introduce themselves briefly, uh, starting from Pat. <laughs> Pat Raycroft, Associate Di Director with W. Capra, a consulting firm out of Chicago. Michelle Wexler, a software engineer for payments at Airbnb. Uh, Stefan Thomas, I'm founder and CEO of Coil, a startup in San Francisco. Adrian Gropper, I'm Chief Technology Officer of a nonprofit called Patient Privacy Rights. Privacy Rights. Great. So uh, I'd like to ask you, what are the greatest achievements uh, that you feel that you have uh, in your life, uh, you know, come to this far? Yeah, I, I know it's a heavy question, but... <laughs> I can start. Um, I think the having worked in Silicon Valley for uh, many years in payments and several uh, companies, large and, and several fintech uh, startups, uh, I always bring um, innovation and um, thinking openly and critically about problems. Um, I think there's a lot still to be done in the payment space and uh, a lot of innovation still to be, uh, to be done. Uh, and that's why I really like that space and, and feel like there's so much to do uh, still. That's great, yeah. Who, yeah, Pat, you want to share? Yeah, I think my, my uh, I guess, greatest view of what I, the work I do is is bringing a bit of, of pragmatism and a people first view to innovation as well. So, you know, everyone up here is extremely brilliant in their field of, of uh, technology innovation, especially as it relates to consumer experience and payments. But um, one thing that I, I've prided myself on is, is being pragmatic and being able to bring those into, uh, into scale and into the, the real world and, and affecting consumers' lives and, and retail operations. That's great. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Who else wants to share? Yeah. No. Oh, well, um, I've had the privilege of um, of working in two kinds uh, at the intersection of two kinds of regulated uh, uh, processes: uh, device, medical devices, in my particular case, as well as professional licensure, because I'm a physician, but I, I have not practiced medicine beyond internship. And it's been a really interesting career to be able to see the role of uh, regulation, which is now becoming so prominent yes. in, in web monetization and other aspects of how we use data today. Cool. Yeah, so for me, I, I don't know if there's like a specific, um, you know, single event or thing. Um, but so for me, like we started Coil to help creators, um, you know, get paid for their work um, and get a reward for their work. Um, and so there have been a few instances where um, people have gone to Twitter or elsewhere and basically said like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing so much better now that I'm using this technology or, you know, hey, you really helped help me out. Like this kind of content wouldn't be possible without this technology. And so I think it's those little moments that, you know, what you're doing actually has an, an impact is, is probably the thing that I would highlight. That's great. So, um, so what is the trend that you're seeing happening in your industry? And how do you see from a year's time in 2020 and in 2029 uh, <laughs> that will happen? Yeah, so who wants to share? Mm. Well, I'll start. Um, the, uh, in, in my, uh, in, in the healthcare field, uh, there is this uh, realization that we have two kinds of actors in industry. There are the principals, like a drug company or a medical device company or a surgical team that fixes knees. Uh, and then there are the platforms. And uh, the platforms are the people that broker the data and that uh, manage reputation to some extent and, uh, and other roles. And it's very interesting because uh, the decision of the large principles, uh, the, these very well-funded entities, as to whether they want to act as a platform or they want to stick to their core business is something that <coughs> has to be made now constantly and will change, I think, as a result of blockchain and as a result of uh, regulatory changes uh, in the next few years. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so I think for me it's like this sort of 
once you um, see the matrix, you can't unsee it kind of thing. And so um, once I started thinking about um, what if payments were like the internet, where it's just interoperable and you don't even think about the fact that you know I'm on PayPal and you're on M-Pesa and I can still send money to you, right? And so now every time that it doesn't work like that, it just sort of sticks out to me like a sore thumb. Or like every time uh, somebody is promoting, there was a, a project a while ago that Google did called um, uh, the physical web, um, and it was basically like a way for sort of these beacons and, and uh, different devices to find each other. And they had a great demo, which was a parking meter. So you could just walk up to the parking meter, your device would detect that you're near the parking meter, and you probably want to interact with it. It was all super seamless, and then at the bottom, if you looked at their little demo, at the bottom it said, powered by PayPal. And it's just sort of like, why can we build everything with open standards, but then payments we can't build with open standards, right? And so I just, I want to fix that. I think um, to add to what was said, um, the payments ecosystem is uh, getting more and more online, uh, of course, and uh, we see uh, use cases that in the past were uh, purely offline uh, becoming use cases where um, there's now online involvement and there's room, therefore, for uh, standards. Uh, I think an area that is still emerging, and I, I I see a lot of potential for um, and a lot of progress um, in uh, in the next couple of years is the interoperability of standards and, and payments from uh, various uh, parts of the world. Um, a lot of the uh, payments work to date has been focused on Europe and um, North America. Um, and I think India and China, uh, but also other, um, other uh, forms of payment are going to become more prominent and we're gonna see a bigger consolidation. And whether it's using uh, blockchain technologies or, or other standards, um, I think that's, that's a, a very promising direction. Thank you, Misha. So in, in my field in convenience retail, fuel, QS, uh, quick service restaurant, uh, general retail, uh, the, the trend over the last five to seven years has been the very individualized approach as you were, you were hitting on Stefan, which is, you know, I'm going to develop my own mobile app. That's the way of the future. I'm going to do it. Um, I think over the next, we have already started to see it, but we're going to see it over the next 12 to 24 to 36 months is a transition away from, from mobile apps into progressive web apps and, and a, a web-based experience. Um, just given that there's just too much traffic on our on our uh, devices, um, inherently I think that opens up a lot of doors um, for standards bodies like W3C, but also for um, merchants that are trying to bring uh, new and, and unique and, and innovative experiences to their consumers, uh, as well as just streamlines change a little bit more because today everything is very uh, disjointed because everyone has their very unique mobile app experiences. So I think that's the the near term, um, and then I just highlighting uh, what Michelle said, I, I think the convergence of, of digital into, we have in especially stateside, but, but globally as well, um, the prevalence of brick and mortar retail is, I, I don't, I mean, everyone call, calls it the retail apocalypse, right? But I don't think it's quite there. I think there is a balance between the, the digital and the retail aspects, but it's how does retail change? Um, things like frontline queues going away. You know, we see, we see moments of that innovation in things like you know, Amazon Go and and um, frictionless checkout and, the, and those similar experiences, but wh where's that? Where does the innovation eventually land? Um, I think is what I'm most excited for five, seven years down the line. Thank you, everyone. So um, thank you, and um, meet us at Symposium X. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Symposium X. Today I, I have gathered a wonderful panel of speakers. They are truly amazing. So I'd like to ask them to introduce themselves briefly, uh, starting from Pat. <laughs> Pat Raycroft, Associate Di Director with W. Capra, a consulting firm out of Chicago. Michelle Wexler, a software engineer for payments at Airbnb. Uh, Stefan Thomas, I'm founder and CEO of Coil, a startup in San Francisco. Adrian Gropper, I'm Chief Technology Officer of a nonprofit called Patient Privacy Rights. Privacy Rights. Great. So uh, I'd like to ask you, what are the greatest achievements uh, that you feel that you have uh, in your life, uh, you know, come to this far? Yeah, I, I know it's a heavy question, but... <laughs> Let's start with that one. <laughs> I can start. Um, 
I think the having worked in Silicon Valley for uh, many years in payments and several uh, companies, large and, and several fintech uh, startups, uh, I always bring um, innovation and um, thinking openly and critically about problems. Um, I think 